Right, hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to another video. Today's video is gonna allow a lot of you to let out a sigh of relief. I'm tackling a job today that you guys have been telling me to do for at least the past year. Now, pretty much every time I film a video on my Mondeo, I receive at least one comment about the rust patches on the car. It's had a few patches of rust on it since I got it, um, and I've just never really got around to sorting them out. There's one in particular on the driver's side rear arch that is really starting to bubble and really looks ugly. So whenever the camera catches a glimpse of it, I always get comments saying, please sort out that rust, please get rid of that rust patch. And so that is what we're gonna be doing today. Now, other than the bubbling on the arch, there is a few other little spots where some rust has started to appear. So I figured if I'm gonna tackle that patch, I might as well tackle the others whilst I'm at it. It just kind of makes sense to do it that way. So first things first, I'm gonna take you to the car. I'll give you a quick walk around the various pieces of rust that I've spotted so far, and then we'll get to dismantling anything off the car that needs to be done, and then we can get started. Right, so here's the Monday. I'm going to give you a quick walk around, like I said, just to uh, point out the various places that I've seen the rust. Uh, the number one place, and you can probably already see it on the camera right now, is on this rear driver's side arch. Um, it didn't look as bad as this before, but I've had a little bit of a pick at it with a screwdriver just to see whether it was repairable the way I want to repair it. It doesn't seem to have gone all the way through the arch, so I don't think this needs replacing, at least not yet. So I'm going to try my best to get rid of this without having to do any welding whatsoever. <laughs> Um, now just to the left of it as well you can probably see there's a little strip of rust just here um, and to access that I think it probably goes under the arch a little bit as well um, I'm going to have to take off the rear bumper there's also a tiny spot just there um, and there might be a couple of others along here I'm not totally sure but this is the worst part this is the the main culprit that we're doing this today uh, you can see it's starting to bubble along here so I'm gonna have to set I'm gonna have to sand all this back get all the paint off go all the way down to bare metal treat it um, and then we've got to do some bodywork and some painting so hopefully at the end of this you won't be able to see that rust spot at whatsoever that's sort of the main goal is to get rid of that completely along with these other little areas along here if I move around to the passenger side of the car um, same area you can see along here we've got a patch of rust this seems to be a really common area I've seen a lot of Mondeo's rust from here and it seems to like make its way forward um, so this is quite common but like I said bumpers coming off so we can see how far back this goes because um, I believe it goes a little bit further in than that uh, so we'll take that off and we'll be able to see the extent of the damage there there's nothing along the side whatsoever uh, same on the other side. The only other place that I know there's rust is on the roof here, really close to the windscreen. We've got a patch here, there's a patch here, and then there's another patch there. So we've got three patches along the roof that I'm going to be treating as well. Um, these aren't too bad, these are sort of like a bit of surface rust that start to bubble. Um, ideally, I think the windscreen would probably have to come out, but I'm going to try and tackle these without having to take that out. I think I can get in there with some sandpaper and a few little tools and uh, we can treat that how it is. Uh, you can see someone's tried to do it before. The paint is slightly different around here. Um, so someone's had a go at this, I think. Just not done a very good job. Um, there may be some rust underneath, but I'm not going to be bothering with that today. I'm just going to be worrying about the cosmetics on the outside of the car. So that is the plan. But like I said, this is the worst. This is what everyone always moans about. Whenever I film anything in this area, on the wheels or whatever, uh, people always whinge about this. And to be fair, it is a very bad eyesore and it looks ugly. So I look forward to getting that sorted out. Oh, it's so cold today. I apologise if my voice sound funny film that's so cold I'm filming this at like seven o'clock at night and I'm wearing shorts for some reason so it is a little bit nippy now you guys are probably wondering the method that I'm going to use to get this sorted because in an ideal world if I knew how to weld I've got a welder but if I knew how to weld I would probably cut that arch out and weld in a new piece and do it the proper way but you're never really going to get rid of all the rust like 100 percent unless you do that unless you cut it out and put in new metal but it's an old car i don't really want to put a lot of money into it because i'd have to get someone to do it for me i've decided i'm not going to go down that route at least just yet if in the future it comes back and i really want to get it done properly um, then i'll go down the welding route and maybe i'll be able to weld myself by then i figured in the future because i am actually learning to weld at the moment once i know how to do it maybe that'll make a good video and i'll, I'll give it a go if the rust does decide to come back um, then maybe I can do that in the future. But for right now, my plan is to sand it down, treat it, 
and then paint over it. Um, I know it's not the proper way, but as long as you can no longer see the rust and it's treated, then I'll be happy with that. It is just an old Ford Mondeo at the end of the day, so it doesn't have to be a crazy repair. And so to do the job, I've got a few different bits and pieces here on my workbench. Um, the paint for the car is right here. I've gone ahead and picked myself up some ink blue paint off eBay. Um, I've used this company before, um, I think I got my uh, Vauxhall Astra paint from these guys um, and the paint was really good. So I went with them again, ink blue paint and then we've got a lacquer here, clear lacquer for the top. Uh, we've got some etch primer because obviously we're going to be going down to bare metal so I want some decent etch primer to go on there. I've used Autotech paint for pretty much all my painting projects um, and they've always come out pretty good so um, I've gone with them for that. I've then just got some cleaning solution just to clean up the area before I paint just so there's no grease and oil and stuff. Um, you've seen that before. I've got my paint trigger from the paint cans. And then we have got this magical solution right here. I've never used this before, but I've seen people use it and it seems to be a really decent product for treating rust. Um, it's called Vactan, as you can see, and it comes in this rather industrial looking bottle. I bought this off eBay and it was around 15 pounds, I think it was for this bottle. This is like a, a litre bottle, so there's plenty here. I've got a paintbrush for it, but essentially what this does is you paint it onto the rust, so you get rid of as much rust as you can, you paint it onto the rust that's remaining, it actually causes a chemical reaction with the rust and turns it back into metal. Now don't ask me how it works, but I've seen it work and apparently it does a really good job. So I picked some of this up because we're going to give it a go. Um, I'm just going to try it out and see how we get on with it. But, but hopefully once this turns the rust back to metal, we can then go ahead and do our body work. I've also got some body filler over there somewhere, which we'll have to use as well because once we've sanded down and stuff, we're going to have to add a little bit of body filler just to bring it back up again. Um, and then we can get painting and then we should be all good. So that is the game plan. It's going to be a little bit of an experiment because I am not too clued up with body work. I don't really do it very often. I've painted a few things in my time, but I've never really dealt with rust and I've definitely never used this Vactan stuff before. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works uh, and see if it actually works because I've, like I said, I've never used it. So this could go one of two ways. Like I said though, before we can do anything, before we can start sanding and painting and all that stuff, I want to get the back bumper off just to give me the best access possible to those pieces that are sort of hugging the bumper. Um, I just want to make sure that I can see completely under there just to make sure that I get all the rust um, and I don't leave any hidden. So that is job one of today. Let's go ahead and get the bumper off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jack the rear of the car up because I also want to take out the driver's side wheel liner just to make sure that there's no rust behind there as well. I think that's enough talking. Let's crack on. Right, so in terms of removing this bumper, I've never had it off before, so I don't know how these cars are attached. There seems to be a screw at the top, or well, not that they're attached actually, they're not attached, never mind. Uh, but I assume like most cars, there's probably some around the wheel arch, some along the bottom, and it must be held on the top somehow, mustn't it? But I can't see anything up here that's holding it, weirdly enough. Uh-oh, just found a bit of rust. We might have to treat that while we're here as well, just because. I think it's just held in by clips at the top though. I think there's just clips along here holding it in. So it's probably just going to be a tug off job. <laughs> you know what I mean. But like I said, I don't want to get the car jacked up in the air because I want to take this wheel off and I want to take the, the wheel arch liner out from this side because I want to make sure that this rust hasn't gone all the way through because I might need to treat it from the back then as well. Um, I just want to make sure of that, so you can't feel it from the back um, because that plastic's in the way. So I want to get that out just to be sure. So bumper, wheel arch liner, wheel, and then we can start digging into the rust. Right, so this is the current situation. Wheel is off on both sides, car's in the air, axle stands. I think the first thing I'm gonna do is try and remove the arch liner out of here. Uh, it looks like it's held in by Phillips screws and then some of these really, really annoying metal, like round screws that are on a thread. Um, I'll have to show you once they're out. But they're very annoying because you have to use a pair of pliers to get them out. But other than that, there is there's a Phillips screw here on the bumper and then there's another little plastic clip there and one there. 
and then one here as well and then there's just a bunch of those weird clips around the outside so i'm going to go ahead and remove all those things go ahead and get this wheel liner out just so i can get to the back here because as you can see you can't see what's going on from here but i'd like to know a little bit more to see if there's any more rust on the back here that i need to treat before i go any further that's what they look like these ones just pulled off because they're so rusty but usually you have to sort of unscrew them with the pliers stick the pliers in the holes like so and you'd have to usually unscrew it like that which can be a pain but these ones came off nice and easily because they're really rusty <laughs> another hopefully i'll be able to reuse these though wrestling to get this out as you can probably see this wheel arch liner does not want to come out can you see all the dirt coming out of this thing look at that that is why these cars rust Check this out, look. This is exactly why rust starts to form, because this mud gets stuck in places like this. Look at the state of this, look. It's just everywhere. Look how much has fallen out already as well. It is a crammed full of dirt. There's a little ledge there, and there's a little lip all the way around this where the, uh, the mud gets stuck on and then water becomes involved, the mud gets wet and that starts to rust it and that's exactly what happens, that arch liner basically keeps all the mud in there that's what it basically does it's its only function, it's very annoying but you can see we've got some other patches of rust in here so a little bit, mainly surface rust it looks a lot worse than it is but there is a couple of patches like that that I might go ahead and treat just because uh, although it doesn't look that bad it's only going to get worse so you might as well treat it while you're in here but um, there you go. I just wanted to look, you can see, this is the other side of this patch that we we're working on. That's the other side, right there. Hopefully you can see in there, right? Right, so I just wanna show you, just in case you wanna know how to do this. On this bracket in here, there was one more screw, where my thumb is, right there in that hole. Uh, one more Phillips screw, I'll just take that off, and then the bumper, as you can see has pulled away nicely so that means we're gonna have to do that to the other side i think the rest of it like i said there's a few screws around the bottom but i think this bit all just pulls out and then i'm gonna have to do all the screws and stuff on this side so bear with me we'll get there but i'm just kind of learning as i go i've never taken this bump off before didn't look how to didn't have a google which i probably should have done uh, but we're just sort of learning as we go we are slowly but surely unfortunately losing light as well the sun it's just about to set over there. It is about, I think it's about eight o'clock right now. I decided to come out here and start this after tea for some reason. I was kind of eager to get cracking before tomorrow. Um, I thought if I could get the bumper and stuff off tonight, and then I can just come out here and just do the rust tomorrow and not have to worry about all this faffing around. So the plan is I'm not gonna go back in until this bumper's off. I'm gonna crack on and do the other side. So I found out that on the passenger side, someone's done a proper job of this and just rammed a self-tapping screw through the bumper, through the metal work up in to the, uh, the frame there so there must be something wrong with the bracketing on this or something I'm not entirely sure what but uh, that was nice and easy this side now next to my nice Cobra exhaust pipe there is a few other screws there's a Phillips there 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 and there just four of them along there and I believe that's all that's holding it to this under tray and the whole thing should pull off the only thing I've got to be worried about and concerned about is just the wiring for my rare reverse sensors because obviously when I pull it off I don't want to rip them off the car, so I'm trying to be careful of that when I do pull it off. Oh, 
three of the screws are rounded off. So I'm gonna have to drill them out. So one of the main problems, as you will probably know, of working on these underneath the car with stupid Phillips screws is this happens and they round out. I don't really have a choice but to drill these out. They're so tight in there and so corroded in there. Drill, safety glasses. I then ended up just drilling the plastic um, where the nut is, you can see I've caused a split in it there and I was able to just pull it down now. So it's now free from the bumper, which means that the bumper I think should be free from the car. I should be able to just pull it back and then just unplug the sensors and that should pull off I think. For some reason it feels like something's still holding it on. Turns out there was a secret panel on the bumper. This strip that sits on the middle sits right here. This pulls off and releases five little, no four, little eight mil bolts, yeah? I would never have known they were behind there unless I did that. I swear to God, this car is going to be like half the weight once all this dirt's gone. Look at that. Got half the beach in here. It's really crash, but I could do with a little uh, clean up as well. It's rusty as heck, that. We have our bumper off. This was tonight's plan. God, it's heavy. Bloody hell. It's really heavy. Oh. Well, just as it got dark, we have success. The bumper is off. I've just sat it in here for now, just to put it in its place. This bump was not actually in bad condition compared to the rest of the cars. A few scratches and stuff, but I'm really not too worried about it. Um, it's a bit dark at the moment. I apologise for that. I just really want to get that off tonight, just so that I can come out here tomorrow. Didn't have to faff around with it. I haven't got to play around with it. Um, I can just crack on with the rust tomorrow now. Um, I've got a feeling my mind is not going to let me leave that crash bar on there. In the state that's in, it's really rusty. It's really pretty disgusting. There we go, it's a little bit better. You can see me now. Um, yeah, this crash bar is in pretty bad condition. I didn't realize it was gonna be that rusty. So chances are that's gonna come off and maybe I'll treat that and paint it with like a tough black paint just to give it a bit more life because it's, it's gonna rust away under there. Otherwise, you can see how bad it is in places. So I think it's just bolted on right there. There's two bolts there, two bolts on the bottom around the back and that should just come off, I think. So probably gonna end up doing that just because it's very rusty. Makes sense to do it while the bumper's off, I think. Um, that is all I'm going to do tonight, though. As I said, it's now dark. It doesn't look very dark on the camera, but the sun is gone and it's going to be pitch black anytime. So I'll catch you guys back out here in the morning when we will take off any other little bits and pieces of trim that need to come off. But other than that, we're going to start attacking the rust tomorrow. It's supposed to be quite nice and sunny, uh, which is the perfect weather for tackling rust. So I'll catch you guys in the morning. Right, good morning everyone, it's now the next day. We got the bumper off last night, which was the main plan, but today I'm gonna check to see if there's anything else I need to remove. I'm definitely gonna be removing the crash bar because it's so rusty. I'm either gonna replace the one that I've got with a second-hand unit if I can find one in better condition than mine. All right, so this thing is held on by a bolt here, which comes out under there, one the other side, and then I just need to remove the wiring harness for the um, reverse sensors. They just held on by clips, so I'm just gonna remove them. As with everything on this car, it's rusty. So I've got a 13 mil socket and a hammer. And my hammer matches my gloves, which I absolutely love. I'm just gonna hammer this on. Surprise, surprise. Um, this bolt is not gonna come out without fight. So I'm just gonna go straight to it. I'm not gonna mess around. I've pulled out the Irwin. These are fantastic tools. Never failed me yet. I've used them two or three times and they have not failed me yet, so I'm gonna give these a go. I've explained what they are before, but for those that don't know, they're basically like a grip socket. They're sort of like a spiral shape. You hammer them on, and the more you turn, the more they bite into the bolt, do the job. It's 
success. We did it. I'm gonna have to get another bolt though. You can see how rusty they are. That was loud. That's actually not a bad thing. Well, there we go. Didn't actually take much force to break that. Um, I only just got started on doing it. It just went. Just so rusty, I think, that was the problem. So I'm gonna have to source some more of these. This thing should be now free to come off, I think. Although, I think it's probably welded itself on a bit. So I might need to get a dead blow or something and just give it a few whacks. There she goes. These bumper mounts on the side here are gonna to have to come off. They're held on by a bunch of screws. This one looks really dodgy right there, so I'm gonna probably have a problem with that. But I'm gonna take all them off and get this off because it's in the way of this little patch of rust that I've got right here. And it also impedes me on this piece right here. Um, I'll take it off on both sides. And, and then I think that's it. I am gonna take off the wheel arch liner on this side as well. It's probably gonna be quite rusty on the inside of this one as well, so I'll take that out and I'm gonna treat the arches while I'm here. Just kind of makes sense to do it whilst I'm doing all this other rust treatment. I might as well do the arches as well. And then I'll treat these things as well because these are a little bit rusty on the end. But before I put the new bash bar on, I'll make sure that these are all treated and rust free as well. Got a slight issue. As you will have seen, I just took off that bracket that holds the bumper on. I thought it would be a good idea to have a prod at this piece of rust with a screwdriver just to make sure that it is strong enough to treat it um, and that the metal is still good. Turns out it's not. That is what has just happened. I'll be completely honest with you, I thought that this rust was just like surface rust but a little bit worse and I thought I was going to be able to grind this down, sand it down, treat it fill it and then paint it and make it look beautiful again uh, but as you can see by this massive like finger size hole that is not the case in fact even this lower part here right at the bottom of the arch is rusty I don't know why I didn't do this sooner I have hit it with a screwdriver before and it didn't go through but that was like a month or two ago and uh, it seems to have gotten worse since then so I'm not very happy with that unfortunately this is probably gonna mean that's got to be welded, which means I have to source an arch. I don't know if you can even buy arch pieces for this car. Um, if you can't, that means I've got to make one. And that's a lot more work than I was hoping this was going to be, I'll be completely honest. I'm a bit bummed out by that. So I just had a quick search on eBay just to see if they sell a rear arch for this. Because if you can buy the piece, then all you've got to do is weld it in, which makes it a lot easier. And they do sell it. It's the rear arch you get the uh, fuel filler and all this part, but then you also get the arch. Now, I'd probably end up cutting this bit off if I was to do this and just use the arch because there's nothing wrong with the rest of my bit around the filler neck and stuff. Um, it's just that arch that's the problem, so. Hmm, might have to do that. It is 95 pounds though, which is a lot of money for what it is, but it would make it a heck of a lot easier having that than trying to make up your own one. Plus, I can't weld, so that's a problem. Right, so I've had a quick thought, and what I decided to do is I'm going to experiment with this Vactan stuff, because like I said, I've never used this before. Don't know if it works, don't know if it's any good, before I put any of it on the car, just in case it doesn't work or whatever. I'm just going to use a little bit of it as a test piece, because it's very rusty. Just real quick, it's got the instructions on how to use it on the front, um, and it's pretty simple. Uh, you wire brush the surface to remove any loose rust, ensure the surface is oil and grease free, um, and you can apply it either by a paintbrush, or you can actually put it in like a spray bottle and spray it on. Uh, those are the two ways to apply it. And then it says it says that this stuff is self-priming, so you don't need to put a primer over it. But you can put a primer over it if you want it to last even longer. So that's what I'm going to be doing anyway. So that's pretty much it. Like I said, I'm just going to do a little piece of this crash bar. Um, leave it for 40 minutes and just see what happens. 
Um, I'm kind of intrigued. Like I said, I've seen other people use it. Just, I just want to see what it looks like in person. I've got my uh, my drill with the wire attachment. I'm just going to do a little section here. There's not really any loose rust there, but I'll do it. Give it a quick whiz with this anyway. Just going to give it a real good shake up. Dip the old paintbrush in straight in. And we'll just paint it on. What's supposed to happen is uh, some sort of chemical reaction in this which turns the rust black and uh, turns back into metal supposedly. So we'll leave that for 40 minutes and then we'll come back to it and see what it's done. Probably given this about an hour and a half now to cure and you can see straight away where I've treated it. From about here to here, I used the wire wheel on the drill. Um, so I got rid of a lot of the rust before I even treated it. Whereas here, I just treated it straight to the rust. You can tell that on the left-hand side, it hasn't quite um, tackled all of the rust. It's done a good job and you can see where it's turned black here. Um, but on this side, you can see that it's pretty much got rid of all the rust completely and turned it black. Um, this is what it looked like before, a little bit like that and that's now what it looks like. So it was definitely a worthwhile test because I've now found out that it's best to get rid of as much of the rust you possibly can using a wire wheel or sandpaper or something like that before using the back tan. At least now I can apply that to uh, when I actually put it on the car. So I just want to give it a quick clean, uh, just to make this a bit of a better place to work. It doesn't help if all this stuff is covered in mud and whatnot, so now that all that mud is off, it actually reveals a little bit more rust, especially in this well up here, uh, which I'm debating whether to tackle that as well whilst I'm in here. It kind of makes sense to do so. Some of it's getting quite bad, but it would probably mean taking the strut out. This 20 minute job of tackling this little bubble of rust on the arch is starting to tumble into like a restoration, which I wasn't planning on doing. But uh, if it's got to be done, then it's got to be done, hasn't it? Might as well do it while I'm in here. But I do wonder while it's off the road whether it's just worth doing it, just because. Uh, let me know down in the comments what you guys think I should do. Because I'm not entirely sure yet. Right, so this is now the game plan. I'm going to tackle the passenger side arch because I know that that can be treated. I'm also going to tackle the bits of rust that are above the windscreen because I know that they can be treated. As soon as I can afford to, I'm going to order the driver's side rear arch, um, the actual metal piece that you can get on eBay, and then I'll get that welded in because um, that's going to need to be cut and welded. There's no way around it. It's going to have to happen. So I might even take those struts out and do all the wheel well, treat all that rust and uh, make sure that that doesn't come back to haunt me in the future. I do plan on having this car for a long time, so it's best to do it now rather than have to do all this again down the line. Uh, so that's probably going to be the route I take. So this job is going to be a lot longer and a lot bigger than I first thought, but it should make for some good content though. So hope you guys are enjoying it so far. So this is the number one piece of rust that we're going to start with. Like I said, it's really, really like light surface rust you can see that someone's had a go at sanding it before um, but they obviously must have gave up or something it goes around underneath you can see along there so we'll need to sand all that i'm then going to go ahead and give it the vac tan treatment um, just so that all the rust disappears and then we'll prime it so that's ready for paint um, and we'll leave that as it is for now the rest of this arch is actually pretty decent i don't think there's anywhere else that really needs attention there's a couple of marks here which i might deal with whilst i'm doing all this uh, but that's not rust and we'll uh, start tackling this take some of this paint away just to make sure that there's no rust further up here. Right, so I actually ended up just doing it by hand, just used a piece of, uh, what's this, 120 grit sandpaper and just sort of went at it. I've now taken all the rust off this bit here. It's just down to bare metal now and obviously the paint that's above it. Um, I've chased it back a bit just to make sure that the rust hasn't gone up behind the paint. 
and I miss it. So I've gone further than the rest was. And it's all just clean metal there, which is good. Underneath I've sanded as well, all the way back to bare metal. And I've also done, there's like a little lip inside, which is actually what makes these rust out in the first place. There's a lip underneath and uh, it's like a little shelf. Imagine it like this. And the mud gets up, sits on the shelf. The water then gets in the mud and then that's what starts to rot it out. So I've also sanded that lip, got all the dirt off it, sanded that down inside. I'm gonna treat that as well and also paint that because that is where the rust seems to start. It starts from the inside and then rusts its way out and then comes through the paint. So I'm quite happy with that. All I can see is now a nice shiny metal. I am gonna treat it with a rust treatment just because I can. Um, it doesn't really need it particularly because this is pretty much down to clean metal, but because I've got it, I might as well put it on. Um, it helps to prime it as well. If there is any small minute bits of rust that I have missed, um, that'll turn it back to metal. So better to do it than to not. I'm gonna use some of this pre-paint cleaner. It just degreases the area and gets rid of any oil or any grease that's on there that will stop this vac tan from working. I'm just gonna give it a quick wipe down with this with a towel and then we can apply the vac tan. I'm gonna clean that inner lip as well. Like I said, it's right underneath. I'm just gonna clean that inside bit so we can add a bit of vac tan in there as well. Just gonna give you a look at it before. This is what it looks like. Right, now for the vac tan, I'm just gonna do what I did on the piece of metal down the garden and just brush a little bit on. Just to the whole area that I um, sanded. Right, so I think I've decided what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end this video as a part one and we're going to part two where I treat the windscreen and also we'll do the painting in part two as well. This video is gonna be way too long if I put it all in one. I know people will get a bit bored. So I'm gonna put it in two parts just so it breaks up a little bit. We did get quite a bit of work done today. We got the car pretty much stripped down, got everything prepped and I've also treated uh, this rear wheel arch um, and then I need to paint it and do all the body work and that afterwards, which will be in the next video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe for future content. Let me know if you enjoy these types of videos. Also, don't forget to pick yourself up some merchandise if you fancy yourself a Savage Garage t-shirt or a long sleeve tee or a hoodie or a phone case, head over to the store. The links are in the description down below. Um, but you should be able to see at the bottom of the video if you're on a PC. You should be able to see my store down there so you can pick and choose from that as well. Thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.